there's a good chance you are setting yourself back in your dog training by allowing your children to be involved in the wrong way. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about how to involve your children in such a way that it betters the relationship with your young puppy. I'm Instructor Meg. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. One of the most common mistakes we see with young kids training is that they don't always have the best timing. We need to coach them to have good timing so that we make sure that they are capturing or identifying when the dog makes the right choices and helping them to make sure that they're not repeating commands so that the dog learns they can just ignore the child. When we're working with kids, we want to teach them that when the dog does the thing correctly, whatever behavior it is that they're looking for, they mark that with a yes. That tells the dog immediately that they've done something correct. The problem with kids is that sometimes they don't know what behaviors they're looking for. This is where we come in. We want to help them. So we want to teach the child, here's where the dog is correct. Now is when you want to say yes. Now is when you want to reward. Without meaning to, sometimes kids also repeat commands over and over and over again. They're not actually the only ones who do this. Adults do this as well. But kids are so easily coached. I want to teach my children that when I say a word, I'm going to only say it once, and then I'm going to reward the dog. If the dog doesn't respond, here's how we're going to help them. Here is how we're going to follow through. If we repeat commands over and over and over again, it teaches the dog that they don't actually have to respond the first time we say anything. And then the puppy realizes the child's voice doesn't really matter. So instead, if they ask the puppy to do something, mark it with that word, yes. If the puppy doesn't do it, instead of just repeating the command, have a way to back up your voice. Repeat the command, but then show the puppy what you like. Or repeat the command and then have the adult redirect the puppy to where you want them to go. All of this is going to strengthen the relationship and the bond between your child and dog because the dog realizes that when the child says things, they need to respond and good things happen when they do. So was he biting your fingers a little bit on that one? Perfect. Let's work through that next. So the next thing we're going to do to teach him to take food gently, you're going to take the treat, whoopsie easy, and you're going to cover the treat with your thumb like this, okay? So he can't get it. If he sniffs or licks my finger, yes. I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to take my thumb off. If you go and try to give him a cookie and he's a little bit rough, you're going to do this, ouch, or hey, or oops, or something like that to let him know that it doesn't feel nice, okay? So put the food on your fingers, cover it with your thumb. Good. And now present it to him. If he sniffs or licks, yes. So just make sure you always say yes first, then food, okay? Unfortunately, all too often, we see children handling dogs improperly. Sometimes this even results in the dog being unsure about the child touching them at all. We want the dogs to learn from a very early start that when a child takes control in a very non-confrontational way, that it is a positive thing. So I want to teach my puppies that if my child comes in to take their collar, maybe even just to clip a leash on them, that it is a good thing. I'm not going to have my dog do a lot of excessive handling with the child, and I certainly won't do that without my presence and supervision. But I do want to teach a puppy from the very beginning that if a child takes your collar, let that happen because good things happen when children take control. I also want to teach my child from the beginning how to handle a puppy appropriately. It's not okay to grab dogs, pull them towards you, lay on them, certainly not anything like that. So we want to teach the child this is an acceptable way to take control of a dog and to ask them to do things. So often we start with simply using food to lure them in to take the co control using the collar. We want these children to learn that when you use food and gently bring the dog in, the dog is going to be more accepting of this. We want the dog to learn that when the child uses food, to go with it, to not fight back, to not resist them taking control. So a very simple exercise is luring with food, taking the collar, and rewarding over and over and over again. Eventually, this can again result in the child then coming in and putting a leash on the dog. This would allow them to have even more control. All little steps along the way so that the puppy accepts any handling that the child asks of them. Good. Oh, do you have multiple, do you have food in that hand too? Ah, good. So keep all the food in one hand. Okay. Perfect. Because it's hard to grab his collar if you have cookies in your hand, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. So lure him in close first. Let go of the collar. Lure him in nice and close. Good. Take the collar. Good. Yes. And feed him. And feed him again. Yes. yes. So what I really want you to be careful about, buddy, 
is taking the food, luring him in close, and then taking his collar as you're feeding him. I don't want you to ever take his collar and pull him towards you. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. then what do you think he'll do if you pull him towards you? Mm -hmm. Bite? I don't think he would bite. Um, but a lot of the time, he could bite, especially a young puppy might bite. But a lot of dogs don't like that. If you pull one way, they'll actually pull back the opposite way. Okay? It's very important that children learn what is an appropriate touch. We do not want dogs to ever feel compromised or worried with children. So I want to teach children that they may touch ears, touch paws, touch tails, touch the entire body, all with my presence and a positive association for every single one of these body parts. We refer to this as handling. It's a little bit more than just giving a pat. We are specifically touching different body parts, and these are going to be body parts that might eventually need to be examined if they have to get their nails clipped, if we have to look inside their ears to see if there's a tick inside or if there's a little bit of a dirt. Now, the child is not likely going to be doing all of this serious handling as the dog grows up, but we do want to teach the dog that any touch is going to be a positive experience and something that they should allow to happen because it's not going to be harmful or hurtful to them at all. Now, we also want to teach the child what are inappropriate touches. You are not to hug the dog. You are not to squeeze the dog. You are not to grab their tail or grab their paws and certainly not lie on them. These are all lessons that the child needs to be taught by you because without that information, lots of kids aren't aware of what's inappropriate with a dog. So we want to teach them step by step. Here's how you touch. Here's how you reward. And here's what we expect from the dog. We want calm. We want quiet. We want relaxed. If at any time the dog resists this, we're going to make it a little bit easier and teach them that this is what we like from you to do and this is what results in a reward. No matter what exercise or skill we're working on, we are going to follow a process to help teach the dogs what we're looking for them to do. We will often use the formula of cue, stimulus, reward. Now, to a seven-year-old, they don't understand what any of that means, so we need to break that down for them. The cue might be something like response to name. The stimulus might be putting food on their nose to help lure them back towards us. As we back away, we use our body language to encourage the puppy towards us. Then the reward, of course, is going to be our praise and our touch and the food when they reach us. So we need to help break that down for a child so that they have the right timing and the right process for the dog to learn. On his nose, honey, walk right up. And now you're gonna say his name. Bye. Good, and back away. Now, do you see how he was starting to jump at you again? Mm -hmm. It's because of where you're holding the food. So if you hold the food up high, do you think that's gonna make him jump more or less? More. Exactly. So where do you think you need to hold that food? Down here. Exactly, perfect. So you're gonna try it again. You're gonna say five. You're gonna put food right on his nose and lure nice and close to your legs. Okay. Sound good? Okay, I'll distract. Good, food on his nose. Five. Yay! Good job! That was perfect. Good. Let's try it again. Good. Right on his nose. Five. Yes! Good job. He likes this one. You want to try it one more time? Good job. Pop it up. Okay. Oh, that's two. That's okay. Come put it on his nose. Good boy. Good job. Five. No. Good job. Now, you did what a lot of people do. You actually were starting to run away before you actually had his attention. So this time, don't start moving until you have like his eyes on you. Do you know what I mean? So you're going to say, you're going to get his attention. Five. Yes. And then back away. So I think you just need to slow down a little bit because sometimes when we go too fast, it makes things um, a little too crazy. Okay. Okay. Come on over here again. Right on his nose. Five. Yes. Good job. He liked that one. Okay. Now, I think five... Uh, likes you and likes your motion. So I think he's getting a little bit more excitable. Kids will be kids and dogs will be dogs. That often means that the energy in your household might be a little bit more than what you're looking for. It's important that kids understand how to be calm around dogs. We've already established that. But it's also important that dogs learn that you don't get to be reactionary and be wild anytime the child moves in the house. I like to teach my dogs what they can do instead of chasing, instead of biting. So we need to coach them through this. All too often, we see that kids and dogs are left alone and are given no rules. This then results in dogs chasing the children, biting the children, intimidating the children, 
And sometimes the children trying to take control of that situation, which does not always end well. I do not want to leave this up to chance. And I certainly do not want anyone to get harmed in the process. So I want to teach my puppy how to learn to ignore all the excitement around them at times. Because there will be times in my house where the kids are going to be a little bit wild. Instead of letting them chase the child, I love to establish a bit of control by using a dog bed, a space, a mat, somewhere that they can go that they know the child is not going to bother them in that space. And their only job is to remain in that spot while all the excitement is happening around them. So I often use my kids as a distraction to teach self-control. This allows the children to be involved and it allows the dog to learn, do not react to every single movement that the child has in the house. I make it really easy to start. So the dog will be relying on a dog bed and I simply ask the child to walk by, maybe even at a distance. Maybe it's too difficult if the child is really close to the dog bed. Gradually, I have the child move closer and closer. Then I might even have them act wilder and wilder, all the while rewarding my puppy for making excellent choices. The puppy learns kids can be silly, kids can be wild. My only job is to remain on this bed and I will get lots and lots and lots of reinforcement. Eventually, I give them a break. I let them get up and have some fun as well. And then it might be that I make the child be calm. They can take turns back and forth. What I don't want is for the child to get wild, the dog gets wilder. The child gets wild, the dog gets wilder. Until all of a, uh, all of a sudden, I don't have control in my own household. So both parties need to learn how to act appropriately around each other. If the puppy is loose in the house, I ask the kids, don't run right now. If the kids are being a little bit silly, this is the time where I put a leash on the dog and I teach them, here is what I expect of you. Running after the child is not an option. This is a much better behavior and this is going to earn you lots of rewards instead. So one of the reasons I do things like this is to make it fun and silly for the kids. They really need to be involved in the dog training, but sometimes it's hard for them to be involved in the really serious stuff. More of the control positions, like simply learning how to lie on your bed. But kids are fabulous at distracting. So make it fun. Give, it the, uh, give them a little bit of freedom to come up with their own fun things to do so that they go, uh, I'm involved in this dog training and I'm having fun distracting this puppy. Until eventually the puppy learns, you're being a bit pushy, that they need to remain on the dog bed no matter what that kid is doing around them, even if they're running around with capes on their backs. We love using crates in our training. And the crate is a very valuable tool that we can actually use to increase the value of the child as well. I like to teach the puppies that when they're in their crate, they're going to be left alone by the child. However, the kid can also be involved in teaching the puppy that the crate is a great place. They can hold the puppy back, throw some treats in, reward them for going in. They can be the one who provides their meals for going into the crate. They can be the one who has the puppy go in and out of the crate all with supervision, which increases their role as a leader in the household at a very low risk, all with me letting them know how to do so properly to keep everyone safe. Now, I want to reiterate again, when a puppy is in their crate, this is not an appropriate time for the child to be bugging at them, sticking their fingers in the crate, even lying in front of the crate and putting their face up against it. When a puppy is in their crate, this is their downtime. This is their place that they can be safe and they can go to relax. This is not a space where you want your child to be bothering the dog. So when the dog's in the crate, children should be told to walk away. They can come play with them again when I choose for the puppy to come back out. Children should not be letting dogs in and out of crates without my uh, okay, without my say so. So my children know the puppy remains in the crate until mom says, okay, go get a cookie. You can let the puppy out of their crate. We can have a nice training session together but at no time is the child gonna go up onto the crates and let them out uh, on their own. The crate can also be a really valuable tool to teach the dog some self-control once again, with the children being the one in charge. Having your dog learn that when the crate door comes open, not to dash out in front of the kids is an excellent exercise. I will often have my children practice opening the crate door, tossing some cookies into the crate, closing it again, doing this several times until when they're ready, they can open that crate and tell the puppy, okay, release them out of the crate in order to get fed, again, for coming to them. This teaches the puppy how to have that self-control. It teaches the child that they can have the puppy do things for them. And both parties learn that the crate, once again, is a great place to be and a great place to come out of when asked. All of this, though, is under control, and it's going to be a structured exercise. 
In today's video, I've been talking about how to make sure that your child is a good leader for your dog. But ultimately, this depends on you being a good leader for your dog because you're the one who's giving your child all of this information. If you're not sure if you're a good leader for your dog, check out this video right here. On that note, I'm Instructor Meg. Happy training.